Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be talking about how you can authenticate a user into Firebase. Specifically, we're going to be talking about how you can authenticate a user as an anonymous user into Firebase in a way that they can manipulate the Firebase data. If you've set up the actual database to be locked so that only specific users can access the data. Now keep in mind there are other ways you can log in a user. You have the ability to log in users using a Google account, using a Facebook account, a Twitter account. You can have them log in using passwords and usernames that you create inside of your Firebase account. And these are things that we may look at later in other tutorials. It may seem a little weird that we're only going over how we can log in users anonymously. However, this is a pretty useful feature because it gives us the ability to authenticate a user and then track how they use our database in Firebase. So what we can do is have local authentication inside of our Firebase application, and then we can put the users and password hashes into a Firebase store, and then we can make it so that when the user logs in, quote unquote, anonymously, it lines up with their user username inside of the Firebase store. And then of course, when they are logged into our Firebase store, we can have them do read and writes on specific tables. All right, so let's set up our Firebase project. Here we are with a fresh Firebase project. If you guys want to know how to actually set this up so that it works with Flutter, you should go check out my Firebase Flutter tutorial for more detail on that. In this tutorial, we're just going to modify one little thing in our Firebase application so that we can allow for authentication. So we go to this authentication page and you'll see something that looks a bit like what you see on my screen. And then you can click this setup sign in method. And this will open up to a page that will give you all of the different providers that you can choose from. You can use email, password, phone, Google, Play Games, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and Anonymous. In this tutorial, we're going to be focusing specifically on Anonymous. So let's click on Anonymous and let's click this slider to enable it and then we'll click Save. And this will enable the Anonymous sign-in in in our application. Now we can jump back into our code, specifically into our PubSpec YAML, and we want to add Firebase Auth. And at the time of this recording, the version is 0.5.3. I've got some boilerplate set up already inside of our application. We have a simple root widget that creates a material application. This points to a stateful widget called login page. And then the login page has login state, the build function only creating a empty scaffold. And then we also have a stateless widget called home page, which creates an empty scaffold. The idea behind this application is that we want to be able to have the user go to the login page, click a button to sign in, and then that will take them to the home page. We want to make two imports. We need the Firebase Authentication plugin, and we also need the Dart Async library. Now, because we want to use routes in this application, we can add these static final strings called route to both of our main pages. So one for our login page and one for our home page. And we'll give each of the routes a different name. So our login page will just be login dash page and then our home page will be home dash page. And this will make it very easy for us to associate these widgets with their respective routes. We can then create a routes map up here and the map for the routes property is typically a string, key, and then a widget builder value. So we say login page dot route, which is the login dash page string. And we associate that with a function that takes in the build context and then inflates our login page widget. We can do the same for our home page. Now down inside of our material application, we can add our route variable to our routes property. So this is something that we haven't really done before, but you can have both a home page and have routes in your application. All right, so now let's build out our login page. So we want to get an instance of our Firebase auth object. 
This is the object that's going to allow us to log in a user as well as log out the user. And of course we need this to be singleton, so we just take out a single instance of this object. Now let's create a function called sign in anon, and this will be the function that we use to actually sign our user in. This will pass back a future with a Firebase user inside of it. And of course, because it's passing back a future, we need it to be asynchronous. First, we'll create our Firebase user by setting this equal to await Firebase auth dot sign in anonymously. This method sign in anonymously will then create an anonymous user and authenticate him versus our Firebase store. And then we can use that user in other parts of our application. So I'm going to print out signed in and then we'll take the user and we'll get the unique user ID for this user and print it out. And then we'll return our user from this function. Let's create a function that will sign us out. And this function is fairly basic. We just call our Firebase auth instance and then we call the method sign out on it and this will sign out our anonymous user and i'll just have this print out signed out so that we know that we've signed out the user before we build out the user interface for our login page let's come down to our home page and make it so that we can actually pass a firebase user into this home page so when we get back the firebase user after they've logged in we want to then push to the home page but we also want to keep all of the data that we're getting from the login of the user and then be able to display it on the home page. So what we'll do is we'll create a final Firebase user and then we'll take our home page constructor and pass that user in as an optional property. Now for our user interface, we want to have an app bar and the app bar will just say login page. Then the body will have a center with a list view inside of it. We'll set shrink wrap equal to true because we want our list view to expand across the entire page, but we don't want it to scroll. Then we'll give it some padding. So we'll just say edge insets.all 10.0. And then the children inside of this list view will be the buttons that we create to allow us to log in and log out. Just so that we don't have a lot of nesting, we'll create our buttons above where we have our return statement. So the login button will be a container and the logout button will also be a container. For our login button, our container will have some padding and then the child for this container will be a material widget. A material widget is quite literally a piece of material. In other words, it's like a container except it has properties that allow us to manipulate it in a way that follows the material design specifications. For our piece of material, we want to set up the border radius. We'll have this be border radius dot circular so that it's still a rectangle, but it has circular edges. So it'll be 30.0. Then we'll have a shadow color, which will be colors dot deep orange. Then we'll have an elevation, which will make it so that this is slightly elevated off the background and we'll give this 10.0. And then the child of this material will be a material button. We want our material button to have a specific width, which will be 150.0, and then a height, which will be 50.0. So our material button will be at least 150 by 50. And then the color of this button will be colors orange, and there will be some text on it which will say login as guest. The on pressed event for this button will call our sign in anon function. And on our sign in anon function, we can call the then method, which allows us to unwrap the future that's being passed back from our function and then take the object that's inside of the future and then put it into an anonymous callback function. So here's our callback function. We're taking our Firebase user from our signed in anon function. And then inside of this callback function, we're calling the navigator object. And then we're calling the of method on that. And then we're pushing in a new material route so that we can then go to the home page. Inside of the push method, we can then create a new material page route. And then for the builder property, we pass in a function that takes in our build context. 
and outputs our home page. And in here we can then pass in the user that we got from our sign in anon function. So this will then pass it to the home page and then open up the home page. We can also add some error checking if we want to. So we just call catch error on our callback function and then we take the error and we put it into a print statement. Down inside of our list view, we can now put our login button into the children property. Now let's build out our logout button. We want this to be consistent with our login button, so we'll give it the same padding. And then the child for this will not be a material button or a piece of material, but rather just a flat button. Our flat button will have colors, colors white, because our theme is the theme data.dark, which means the background will be black. And then we want to have text on it that says sign out. And the style for this text will be colors black. So we'll have a white button with black text. And then our on pressed function will call our sign out function, which will then sign out the user from this application. And like with our login button, we can now add our logout button to our list view. Now let's build out our home page. In the scaffold, we'll just give it an app bar that just says home page. Then for the body, we'll have a center with a column in it, and the column will have main axis alignment of main axis alignment dot center so that everything is centered. And then inside of our column, we'll have a bunch of text fields, and each one will have a property of our user. So the first one will be our user dot UID. Then we'll have our user dot display name. And then we'll check to see if the user is anonymous, which is just a Boolean. So this will pass back true or false based on whether or not the user is anonymous. All right, so now we can build out this application and take a look at what it looks like. Here we have our two buttons. And you can see this one has a bit of a material design look to it. And it has a nice little shadow on it as well. And a little bit of elevation. If we click in login as guest, this will then log us in and you can see here is the user unique user ID and then the display name will pass back as null because there is no display name and then of course the user is anonymous so this passes back as true. If we come into our Firebase console you can see now that the user actually was created and they logged into our Firebase application. So here we have that user ID that's appearing inside of our Flutter application and then we have dates for when they were created and when they signed in as well as the provider which in this case is that person which means that it's anonymous and then the identifier which again is anonymous. Now if we go back into our application and we hit back we can sign out and we just click the sign out button and this will sign out the user. So now when I click log in again, it should give us a new key. And if we reload this page, you'll see now there is a second user as well. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.